I've been practicing psychiatry for over 20 years. I practice a kind of integrated treatment that combines therapy and medication. I'm on the faculty at Harvard Medical School and also at the David Geffen Medical School at UCLA. Hopefully she understands that she is behaving like an addict. It sounds like she's talking as if she's recognizing that now. That could be a big turning point for her. We didn't see that before. It's not designed to be therapeutic. So what she really needs is a bigger commitment to her therapy. We see students who maybe are having a difficult time or young uh, actors and actresses who are having some difficulty with their career who are prescribed amphetamines for a diagnosis of ADD, which is questionable. The beginning of treatment really is surrendering and accepting the fact that you need help and you can't trust yourself to always make the right decisions. You know, it's a clinical diagnosis. It's based on history and it's based on someone's impression of how significant that history is. So what we hear about is many times somebody is misdiagnosed, uh, overprescribed, and as a result gets into trouble. Amphetamines are addictive substances. In terms of quantifying this trauma, Unfortunately, this is about as bad as it gets. Dr. John Sharp says the psychological recovery process can last from six months to two years. With the conclusion of their healing process, they'll be able to get to the point where they can see that they have beauty, that it comes from within, and that their lives are no longer about this terrible trauma. Bipolar disorder is an accentuation of normal moods. If you think of normal moods as kind of like an up and down wave, like in the ocean, in bipolar disorder, those ups and downs are extreme. They're beyond normal. And if they go farther than that, they can go to such heights or to such depths that people can actually get out of contact with reality. Wow, winning. People that don't have tiger blood, you know, Adonis DNA. They picked a fight with a warlock. A lot of times the public confuses acute mania from bipolar disorder as if it's a different thing. It's the same thing. His behavior really suggests a combination of three things. One is some kind of a mental disorder, possibly bipolar. Another is either the effects of addiction or some kind of lingering effects of substance use. And the third is, you know, his personality. He's always had a big personality. I think it's really amplified by those other two factors. You know, fortunately, I do think that Mel Gibson possibly could be bipolar. I say fortunately because clearly he's having very difficult times regulating his mood. He's having very difficult times with his uh, anger, his impulsivity, uh, with his uh, disconcern for others, uh, with his uh, inner kind of unhappiness which seems to come across. And those are all symptoms of bipolar disorder. The acronym that people typically use for bipolar disorder is dig fast, kind of like digging your own hole, D-I-G-F-A-S-T. So let's just go through those. D is distractibility. I is irritability, G is grandiosity, F is flights of ideas, meaning your thinking is going very quickly, A is increased activities, increased in goal-directed activities, uh, S is decrease in sleep, and T is increase in talkativeness. You know, I've been helping patients in my office for over 20 years, and it occurred to me that if I could reach more people that I'm able to reach in my office, it would be a wonderful and meaningful thing. I found for myself that the emotional calendar is something incredibly meaningful. I saw this in my own life and I realized that it's true for everybody. We all have certain times of the year that go well, certain times of the year that are difficult, and I wanted to actually study the science of seasonality and combine that with my own clinical experience and prescriptive advice in order to help more people do well as they go along in their lives.